Welcome everyone to Blender for Beginners, the tutorial series for people who don't know Blender at all and want to learn from the beginning. And in the last tutorial, we covered some of the basics that let us navigate the viewport and move around objects. And ultimately, we ended up making this Tower of Annoy model entirely out of primitives. And the next step in this tutorial series should obviously be making something much more complex. So for example, we're going to walk through the process of making this sci-fi container in the third video in the series. But before we can get into any of that, we do need to take a step back and go over a couple fundamentals. Specifically, I want to go over the layout of Blender and how to manipulate it. So the objective of this tutorial is understanding and mastering the interface. Of course, this isn't the most interesting topic, but it's entirely necessary to go over before we continue. So let's hop into Blender and get started. So here we have the default startup scene open, and you can see that the interface is essentially made up of four windows. First of all, we have the 3D viewport, which we're already familiar with from the last tutorial. And again, we just use this to navigate and interact with our 3D scene. Directly under this, we have a window called the Timeline, and this is used for playing through our animations and for deciding what frame we're currently on. To the right of this, we have the Properties window, which is used to control pretty much every parameter inside Blender. For example, we already have our cube selected, and you can see the location, rotation, and scale of this object. Of course, a lot of these are zeros because our cube is perfectly centered at the world origin. Above this, we have the Outliner window, which is used to list and organize all our objects. And just like we'd expect, we have the camera, cube, and light listed in the main collection, with our cube highlighted because it's selected. So these are the four initial windows we get in our startup scene. Now even though this is how Blender initially loads, you don't have to keep anything fixed. So let's say that you want to change the size of the windows. To do this, we can just go to any of the window dividers and click and drag to slide around the divider. And you can see that as we do this, Blender is automatically reformatting the windows so everything remains accessible. If instead we want to isolate a window, we can hover over it and use the hotkey key control spacebar to toggle full screen. And this works with any of the windows inside Blender as long as the cursor is inside what we call its environment. So sometimes a command will do different things depending on which environment we're working with. Now another thing to notice is that each window has an icon in its top left corner, and this is used to indicate what type of window it is. So something we can do is swap out any window for any other type of window. So let's use this method to create two different 3D viewport windows. To do this, I'm going to resize our timeline so it's going up halfway vertically and change our type over to the 3D viewport. And again, remember that every action depends on which environment we're working in. So by keeping our cursor in the bottom window, our navigation will only affect that viewport. And even though these viewports are in separate windows, of course they refer to the same scene. So moving an object in one of the windows will also move it in the other. In this sense, the whole Blender interface is synced together. Now suppose we want to add an additional window to our layout. We can do this by splitting one of the already existing windows so we end up with an extra window. To do this, pick any corner in your desired window, like the bottom right corner for example, and then just click and drag inwards. And you can see this made a duplicate of our current viewport with a divider in the middle. If we want to repeat this with the bottom left corner, dragging inwards means dragging to the right. And you can do the same type of splitting vertically. And Blender lets you have as many windows as you want, but as they get smaller they become harder to actually use. For example, the viewport on the top right is practically unusable. So what we need to do is reverse this process by joining windows together. And again, what we do is bring our cursor to the corner of the window, but this time we drag outwards. So in this case, we can drag this corner downwards and release our mouse to collapse the viewport. And one way to think about this is we're having one window overtake another. So for this pair, we want the right viewport to overtake the left one, and that translates to dragging this corner outwards to the left. And we can keep repeating this until we're just left with one viewport. And this can definitely be tricky when you first try this. I remember I used to always accidentally split windows when I wanted to join them and I'd always be left with a bunch of extra windows that I didn't want in the first place. So make sure you practice splitting and joining windows until it becomes intuitive, but there is another somewhat easier way to do this. So what we can do is right click any of the dividers and choose split area. What this does is it lets us put down a divider on any of our windows and you may find this easier than the corner stuff we did before. Similarly, we can right click a divider and choose join area which lets us choose which window we want to collapse. And remember that when we're joining, the arrow is always going to point in the direction of the collapsed window. And there's actually much more we can do with window splitting. For example, if we hold down control while dragging out a corner, the windows will swap. And this is a much faster method than manually swapping out the window types, and this can be done between any pair of windows. Another trick like this is holding down shift while dragging out a corner to create a detached duplicate of the window. And this can be resized and also moved to wherever we want. So this is useful whenever you need an undocked overlay that can be resized and put anywhere. Now using everything that we've talked about, let's try to make 
make some custom layouts. And the one I want to go for is turning our 3D viewport into a quad view. To do this, just drag one of the viewport corners inwards to split the window in half. And then on each of these, we can do a vertical split to get our four viewports. And now using our gizmo, we can make each of these represent a different view. And remember that they're still all referencing the same scene. So moving an object in one viewport also moves it in all the others. And as you can easily imagine, different types of layouts are useful for different tasks in Blender. And generally, we do not have to make all of these from scratch. So over in the top bar, we have all these pre-made layouts called workspaces. So for example, we have a workspace just for modeling, which maximizes the 3D viewport. We also have workspaces for sculpting, UV editing, shading, and a whole bunch of other things. So oftentimes the layout we would want is already made for us in one of these workspaces. And of course, we can also make custom workspaces using the techniques that we've covered. So back in the startup scene, our layout workspace is organized into default configuration, and we can modify this while also keeping a backup of this default layout. To do this, just right-click the layout header and choose Duplicate. And this adds in a copy of the workspace, and we're now operating inside layout 001. So any changes that we decide to make in here will be contained inside the duplicate and will not alter the original layout workspace. And when we're done modifying a workspace, we can just right-click the header and choose Delete. In this case, we got rid of the duplicate and kept the original. And all these techniques really let you shape the Blender interface into whatever you want. So in this sense, Blender is completely modular and nothing has to be left fixed. But those are the fundamentals of Blender's layout, and like I said in the next tutorial, we'll be diving into edit mode to make this sci-fi container. So make sure to stick around to see that, and if you want to fund more high-quality tutorials like these, consider checking out my Patreon. There are of course a ton of benefits like behind-the-scenes content and access to the scripts before I record the videos. So check that out if you're interested, and otherwise I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one.